everything that we're saying now about cryptocurrencies and applications, we said the exact same thing about the internet stocks back in the 90s. Yes. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. There is major tension, to put it lightly, in the geopolitical landscape right now, and that is leading to major uncertainty in the markets. It's official. Putin has ordered troops into Ukraine on the premise that Ukraine is not a legitimate state, but calls Ukraine a U.S. colony with a puppet regime. So Putin's threats have turned into actions. He has ordered troops in the region. And while these are, quote unquote, peacekeeping missions in certain areas that he has now deemed independent, this has forced both U.S. and European leaders to officially call for sanctions as the threat of potential increased war looms. Not trying to fearmonger in any way, but that's where we stand on a geopolitical level globally right now. In today's video, I want to discuss what that means for you as a crypto investor. We'll get Mark Cuban's input. Is he still bullish on Bitcoin? Is he still bullish on altcoins? We'll talk about it. As well as a few pieces of altcoin news that you need to know as an investor. So like always, check the timestamps down below in the video description. Hit the like button and let's jump in, starting with, should we be worried? Mark Cuban shares his thoughts in this first clip out of three. Watch this. What do you make of how the markets are digesting this? I know you've often reminded me over the many years, um, you know, that, that markets sometimes will respond first on a good news item, uh, buying up on it, sell first on a bad news item, you know, selling off on it. Right now, they're very worried about the Ukraine and how that's going to work out. Is that going to be the market mood setter for the immediate future? Yeah, I mean, markets always overreact and overcorrect to, to news or anticipated news, particularly after a big run up, because speculators and investors want to protect their profits. So people run the cash. But the reality is whether rates go to 3% or 4%, there aren't a lot of other good places to put your money. And so while there may be a lull now, just like we've seen in the past, people will come back to the markets. All right. Simple yet seemingly very reasonable analysis on this market from Mark Cuban. But let's keep moving and go to our next clip with Mark Cuban of him specifically talking about crypto today. Because the thing is, last time he was on, we were in a confirmed bull market. Now the price action is negative. Is Mark selling? Is Mark buying? Is Mark still hodling? Here's his views on the crypto market today. So you're looking into crypto and sort of finding a way uh, with this crypto app. Um, could you explain how that works? Obviously, you're a believer in this, but you know, I, I think the last time I had you on, you talked about, look, I mean, you, you don't want to use every last penny and pour it into this, but by the same token, there was promise. Right. Is there still promise? <laughs> Yeah, of course there is. I mean, crypto has different types of utility. Bitcoin is like an alternative to gold. It's a store of value. Ethereum has a programming language on top of it called smart contracts that allow you to build all kinds of different applications. You have to look at investing at crypto the same way as you look at investing at, in anything. Do you think there's a value proposition there that consumers or businesses are going to use? If you think the answer is yes and you think it, it provides enough growth, then you invest. If the answer is no, you don't. The challenge in crypto, like the early days of internet stocks, is separating the signal from the noise. Back in the, you know, 1995, when all the internet companies were going public with only a website, you know, people got all excited and invested in things just because they were there. And you see some of that with crypto as well. But the reality is then, like now, if you find a crypto token or application that really provides value and utility, that's where you invest. And that's what I look for. All right. So in Mark Cuban's own words, he likes Bitcoin, he likes Ethereum. Those clearly have value despite the current short-term dip. And in terms of the other altcoins, while many, 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 most projects will fail, it's just like those early internet days where the select projects that are growing their ecosystem, that continue to implement, that are pushing through the noise, they will make it out on top. Dips equal opportunity. Dips equal opportunity and patience equals wealth. Give me your thoughts on this down below. And if you're asking, okay, Austin, well, what are those projects? What are the altcoins that will make it through the dip? Keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. Nobody can see the future. And it's not one specific video that will give you these answers. 
but instead paying attention day after day, learning day after day, and making sure you're in tune, you're keeping up to date as different projects continue to implement. That's why you subscribe. So checking the comments now, seeing which altcoins you believe in, which altcoins you like, checking the comments now. And that brings us to our third and final clip of Mark Cuban explaining further why investing in crypto today is like investing in the early internet days and why Bitcoin today isn't acting as the quote unquote hedge we were promised. It's because we're early. Watch this. The thinking was, and for a while it panned out, Mark, that um, Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrencies and investments benefited when the regular market was in a tailspin. Uh, now, the, the, the only primary beneficiary that I can see has been gold. Why is that? Yeah, and even gold hasn't gone up that much. You know, as, as markets like crypto mature, that yeah, then, you know, with that maturity comes traditional investors. So you get ETFs, you get, you know, um, institutional investors that are investing in, in cryptocurrencies and crypto applications as well. You see a lot of VCs and private equity investing as well. So it's becoming, you know, more traditional. We Everything that we're saying now about cryptocurrencies and applications, we said the exact same thing about the Internet stocks back in the 90s. Okay. Give me your thoughts down below in the video comment section. Like the video, but let's keep moving. Next up, which altcoins, which projects are making news? And what are the news stories that you need to see? The Luna Foundation Guard, Terra Luna, raises $1 billion to form a Bitcoin reserve for the UST stablecoin, the Terra Luna stablecoin. So another way to say this would be, the Luna Foundation Guard, LFG, has raised $1 billion through an over-the-counter sale of Luna, the native token of the Terra blockchain. So they sold all this Luna OTC to raise money for a billion-dollar Bitcoin reserve. The raise, one of the largest in the history of the crypto sector, was led by major firms Jump Crypto, Three Arrows Capital, Defiance Capital, and many more. So if you like Terra, you like this news, because one, all these major VCs now own Terra. They bought in, now own Luna. They bought in, they, they raised this money. And what this money goes to is supporting the Terra Luna stablecoin. Proceeds from the $1 billion sale will go towards establishing a Bitcoin-denominated Forex reserve for UST, Terra's biggest stablecoin. And it will go towards making this stablecoin as quote-unquote uncorrelated as possible, right? It's not backed up by all cash, but instead it's backed up by Bitcoin. UST is a so-called algorithmic stablecoin that has become popular within DeFi ecosystems. Still pegged to the price of the US dollar, even though to be backed by Bitcoin, it currently boasts a market cap of more than 12 billion, a number that has more than tripled since November of last year. So the Terra Luna ecosystem has continued to get bigger. And now with this news, it's undeniable that progress is happening with the Terra Luna ecosystem. And next up, before we get to lower cap altcoins, if you're in the United States, is there any reason why you have not yet applied for your BlockFi Rewards Visa Signature Credit Card? They are a sponsor of the channel, and they are one of the easiest ways to stack sats passively. Earn an unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every single purchase. And with this card, there is no annual fee, which I love. There are no foreign transaction fees, which I really love. And you can see if you're pre-approved with no impact your credit. There is a link down below. That's blockfi.com slash altcoin daily CC. Link down below. And if you sign up right now, you can earn up to 3.5% back during your first three months on every single purchase. So next time you buy groceries, next time you buy gas at a gas station, a beer for your buddy, whatever it is, why not earn Bitcoin back every single time you do that? This is a passive way to accumulate easily. Link down below. Check it out. Next piece of Ethereum NFT news, a continuation from a story the other day. Board Ape owner files a $1 million lawsuit against OpenSea over their stolen NFT. So a Texas man is suing OpenSea over an exploit that saw high value NFTs, including his Board Ape, sold at a fraction of their cost. So here are the details. A Texas man who unwittingly sold his Board Ape NFT for 0.01 Ethereum, the equivalent of around $26, is suing OpenSea, alleging that the platform knew about the bug and did nothing. 
He claims that he did not list his board ape for sale and that the NFT was stolen and then that the buyer promptly resold that NFT for 99 Ethereum around a quarter of a million dollars. And as we know from the other day, there was a handful of OpenSea users that had their information fished from them where the thief was able to get those individuals to sign over their NFTs. Well, this guy is claiming that OpenSea knew about it, they did nothing, and in damages, he is seeking the return of the board ape and or damages of over $1 million. In a direct quote, accusing OpenSea, instead of shutting down its platform to address and rectify these security issues, defendant OpenSea continued to operate. The defendant risked the security of its users' NFTs and digital vaults to continue collecting 2.5% of every transaction uninterrupted. So he is accusing OpenSea of negligence, and now this is filed in an official federal court in Texas. And that is the video. My name is Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. And for those of you who will be joining us at Bitcoin 2022, that's in Miami from April 6th through 9th, the biggest Bitcoin conference of the year, get your tickets now and feel free to use code altcoindaily for 10% off. See you there.